Let's talk some more about ESP32 cameras. This is probably the cheapest way to get some kind of surveillance camera. Being able to have a camera on a tiny little Wi-Fi board like this is pretty cool. There's probably a lot of different things you can do with it, but the first thing that came to mind for me was a doorbell. So let me walk you through how I took this little board and made it into a DIY smart doorbell. Officially, this is the M5 Stack camera. That's the brand, M5 Stack. The one I got came from Banggood. They're selling them for $15 plus $3 shipping. You've also got the option of getting them from Amazon for $19 with next day shipping. The one I got from Banggood was better shipping than you usually get because I think they have some here in stock in the US or something. So it doesn't take like weeks or months. But if you'd like to get it sooner, Amazon has them for a dollar more. Right off the bat, I'll tell you that the knock that this board has taken is that it heats up quite a bit. And I've certainly experienced that. The board that I got, and I assume all of them that they're shipping at this point, does come with a heat sink that you can put on the chip and it does help it cool down quite a bit. When the board is at rest, not streaming video, it doesn't get hot. It's just when it streams video uh, that it warms up. But I've had mine running for a week now, streaming video off and on throughout the day. It does warm up a little bit, but not so much that I think it's going to break down or melt anything. So it shouldn't be a surprise to you that I'm going to set this up to work in Home Assistant. In fact, this is the image right here of the finished product. It doesn't come with this fisheye lens. I added that fisheye lens myself. I just had an extra one laying around, so I popped it on there. In ESP Home, there are already several configurations for different brands of these ESP32 camera boards. Fortunately, one of them is the M5 stack board. Here is the warning that says it gets hot. So watch out for that. It gives you here an example configuration. I actually didn't see that when I set mine up, so I did it the hard way, but that's important. So we're gonna walk through how to do it the hard way just in case you get a board that is not listed here. As you can see, they also have the TT Go camera which is new. They didn't have that a little while ago. That's awesome. Uh, this W Rover camera, which I think is the ESPI camera and the AI Thinker camera. Those may be all of the available camera boards. I'm not sure. If we look at what Banggood has, this is the AI Thinker board. It says right on it, AI Thinker. So we've got a setup for that in ESP Home. This is the TT Go board. This one's also TT Go. This one's also TT Go. They just have different peripherals, different displays, PIR sensor, things like that. TT Go makes the good ones. I, I think they're my favorite so far. Oh, this is the ESPI board, which I'm pretty sure is based on the W Rover. So as far as what boards are available from Banggood, it looks like ESP Home has a configuration for all of them. But for the sake of education, let's say that the board that you have is not one that has already got a configuration available for ESP Home. It's not too hard to configure it. So let's walk through the ESP Home YAML file and take a look at all the different settings that I put on mine. First part's the basic stuff. These are all the things that get done when you run through the ESP Home new device setup wizard, including choosing the board. Web server port 80, I tried to get this to give me a streaming web URL, but this didn't work. If you put this for any ESP home device, you'll get this sort of web access. So that's kind of nice if you want it. All right, now we walk through the setup of the camera. So this is an ESP32 camera. All of these pins, the external clock pins, the frequency, the, the I squared C pins, the data pins, VSync, HREF, all this stuff, it tells you in the ESP home configuration page, which of them are required, then what you can do is hunt around until you find for your particular board, a pinout. The pinout will tell you which pins are serving which purposes. Then you need to make that match your configuration. In this example, I have the M5 camera A module, pretty sure. So I would go through all these pins and set them up in this YAML. There are eight pins that you need to run the camera that it considers the data pins. 
That's these PIXA data bit pins. So for the camera that I have, these are the pins that it uses. 32, 35, 34, 5, 39, 18, 36, 19, and 15. So in my YAML setup, there's those pins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If you don't have 8, you did something wrong. So you can just go back and forth here and see what pins do what. Vertical sync is 22. V-sync, 22. So href, what's href? Horizontal reference, 26, 26. Pixel clock, 21. Pixel clock, 21. You see where I'm going here? Again, for most of these boards that are available, at least all the ones I've found, there's already an example set up in ESP Home. But if there wasn't, you could do your own, if you could find this pinout for your particular board. The MStack people listed it on GitHub, so that made it easy. Now there are a couple of options that you can set for these cameras. And those are things like the resolution and the quality and the frame rate. So you can set the frame rate. If you don't set it, it defaults to 10 frames per second. The resolution is actually quite variable, even 1600 by 1200. That's a pretty good picture. However, with this particular board, this M5 stack board, there is a warning right here that says because of the small RAM, the board can't obtain it. And what it can't obtain is this level of pixel density, but it can output images up to 800 by 600. So for this particular M5 stack camera, the maximum that you should probably set for your resolution is 800 by 600. That's what I set mine to for now. You can set the JPEG quality to make it higher if you want. I left mine at the default of 10, but you could crank it up and see what happens. There are options for things like brightness, contrast, saturation, and vertical flip and horizontal mirror in case you wanted to mount the camera upside down or on its side. So that's my camera configuration for the M5 stack. One of the things I thought was pretty cool about the ESP32s is that you can use one of their pins or a, one of several of their pins as capacitive touch sensors. To do that, you need these lines here, ESP32 touch and then setup mode true. I'll show you in a minute what setup mode true does. The other part that you need for the touch sensor is to decide which pin you're going to use. This is the ESP home page that tells you how to set up the touch sensor. Shows you you need the ESP touch line and then you need a binary sensor. It also tells you in here which of the pins are capable of functioning as the touch sensor. On the M5 stack board, GPIO 12 and 13 are pretty available because they're the two GPIO pins that are in the Grove connector. But if you knew where these other pins were on the board, you could also use those. The Grove connector on this board has four pins. There's ground, power, GPIO 13, and GPIO 12. So here's where I defined GPIO 13 as the pin I'm going to use for the touch sensor. The next thing you have to do is set the touch sensor threshold. To do that, you actually need to load the sketch onto the board and start looking at the output. All right, so now we're going to upload this sketch. Save it. Verify it or validate it, seems good. And then we're gonna upload it. It can take a while for these to upload sometimes. Once it's finally done, if you leave it connected, you'll start to see a bunch of this output. These numbers here are from the touch sensor. This all shows up because we set that ESP touch sensor to test. And now what you do, if you touch the sensor, you can watch it change. I guess I should do that, but it's over there. All right, I'm going to go touch it. You can watch it change. Ding dong. Someone is at the office door. All right. Did you see for a minute there? When I touched it, the numbers went from the high 900s to three and 400. So what that tells me is where I can set my threshold. Going back to our sketch, here is the threshold. This is the number that determines when the touch sensor is going to be shown in the on state. So since the numbers at idle were in the 900s, and when I touched it, it dropped to 400s, I set my threshold at 500. Now that I know what my threshold is, I don't need the output every second 
So now I can set this setup mode to false. But in order for that to actually change, I need to upload this sketch again. Always like validating. I like validation and hopefully it won't take as long this time. So now it's back up and you can see what's missing here. There is no ESP touch sensor output because there doesn't need to be, but we are getting our images once every 10 seconds or whatever it's set to. So now let's look real quick at how I set this up so that I can get information and see what's happening in Home Assistant. First thing I did was go to my camera page and set up a new camera. This was as simple as going to the UI configuration, adding a picture entity card with the entity of the name of the camera. Simple. Now the important part here is going to be the automation. So here's my automation for the doorbell. The trigger is that touch sensor going below the threshold. When that happens, the binary sensor for the touch sensor changes states from off to on. So the trigger for my automation is anytime the binary sensor goes to on. Then there's a few things I want it to do. First, I want it to send a notification to my phone. That's this part here. Then it sends the camera feed from the M5 stack camera. So I get to see a live feed of whoever's standing at the door. That's the whole purpose of a video doorbell, right? Just to give some additional output, I also set it to make an announcement over my Amazon Echo. So that if I'm sitting in the office and someone rings the doorbell, I'll know. It's also good for them to get some kind of audible feedback to know that their touch of the doorbell has been acknowledged. I also set it up so that with the video feed, I also get the actionable buttons. I also changed one of the buttons to give me the ability to toggle the electronic lock on the office door. So if I'm at work and the kids want to get into the office, they can ring the doorbell. I'll get the notice on my phone. I can push the button to either let them in or to lock them out. So that's what it looks like right now. So you do need power. You can run these on batteries. I don't know for how long. I've got some batteries, and so I'm going to plug them into batteries and see how long I can get them to last. What this is, is just a ground wire that I took out of some Romex, and I just coiled it up real tight, and then I soldered one end of the wire to that, and then the other end of the wire to one of the available GPIO pins, and uh, made that the touch sensor. So it's not really a button even, it's just a touch sensor. That's how you trigger the doorbell and it works. It actually works really well. So I clipped on a fisheye lens to get a little bit better picture, but this is it. Uh, I made this little case, just 3D designed that little case, but that's what it looks like right now. And I just kind of stuck it in right next to the door out there. So. Of course, all this wouldn't be complete without an example of how it's working. Ding dong, someone is at the office door. Example. I'll go out there and ring the doorbell. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so this is what I get on the phone. Wants, who wants access to the keep? And then this actually shows a picture of me, a little mini picture. And if I hold it, it's probably not gonna be able to show the, oh, it does show the camera feed. So that's the current camera feed right now. Um, yeah, there's a criminal at your door. And then I can lock my office, uh, unlock. I can lock it or unlock it, or I can do the lights, I can do whatever. I actually set that up to, to toggle. This is from when it went off earlier. I set it up to toggle so I can toggle the, the lock on or off or I can do a text to speak message. These are all the same things. I can do this office alarm that says, don't need all dad's cinnamon bears. Oh, are you ringing the doorbell? Ding dong. Someone is at the office door. <laughs> Ding dong. Someone is at the office door. <laughs> hey, Jackson, come on in. <laughs> That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.